Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is lesson 4.1. In this video, we're going to focus on classifying triangles and finding angle measures within triangles. When we're classifying triangles, there's two different ways that we can classify them. The first way is by their sides. And there are three different kinds of triangles that we can have as we're looking at what the sides of that triangle look like. The first kind of triangle that we could have is a scalene triangle, and scalene triangles have no congruent sides. So if we wanted to draw out a picture of a scalene triangle, we just can't have any side lengths being exactly the same. The second kind of triangle that we could have is an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, there are two congruent sides. So if we were going to draw out a picture of an isosceles triangle, we would want to mark two sides as being congruent. The third kind of triangle that we can have if we're classifying by the side lengths is an equilateral triangle. And in an equilateral triangle, all three sides are congruent. So if we draw out a picture of this one, all three sides have to be exactly the same length. The other way that we can look at classifying triangles are by the angles. One kind of triangle that we can have as we're looking at the angles is an acute triangle. In an acute triangle, all three angles are acute angles. So if we want to draw out a picture, all three angles have to be acute or smaller than 90 degrees. The second kind of triangle that we could have is a right triangle. And in a right triangle, there's going to be one right angle. And when we draw out a right triangle, we have to be sure to put that box down in the corner with the right angle to show that it is actually a 90 degree angle. The next kind of triangle that we could have is an obtuse triangle. And in an obtuse triangle, there is one obtuse angle. So there's what a picture of an obtuse triangle would look like. Now there is one special kind of acute triangle. And that's called an equiangular triangle. And that's where all three of those acute angles within the triangle are exactly the same size. And this idea of an equiangular triangle is very similar to the idea of an equilateral triangle. In fact, those things go together. If a triangle is equiangular, it will also be equilateral and vice versa. If a triangle is equilateral, it will also be equiangular. We're going to take a look at some examples of classifying triangles based on their sides and their angles. So taking a look at number one, let's classify this by the sides first. I don't see any sides being marked as congruent and we can't just assume that sides are congruent. So this one I'm going to call scalene because we don't have any congruent sides. Now the next thing we're going to look at are the angle measures. So we've got 65 degrees, 58 degrees, and 57 degrees. Those are all acute angles, so that would make this also an acute triangle. If we take a look at number two, here if we look at the sides first, we've got two sides being marked as being congruent, so that's going to make this triangle isosceles. And then we need to take a look at the angles. We don't have any measures given to us, but if we take a look at this angle up at the top, it looks like it opens up past 90 degrees, which would make that an obtuse angle. So this is going to be an obtuse triangle. If we take a look at number three, this one also has two congruent sides, so we can call this triangle scalene. And we've also got a right angle marked out for us, so this triangle is also going to be a right triangle. I want to talk a little bit more about the angles that happen inside of a triangle, and these things are called interior angles. So let's say we had some general triangle picture, and we'll call those angles A, B, and C. When we're talking about the interior angles, I said these are the angles inside of the triangle. So that would be angle A, angle B, and angle C. There's something that's always true no matter what classification of triangle we're dealing with. Acute, obtuse, right, scalene, isosceles. 
no matter what, when we look at those three angles within a triangle and add them together, that always has to equal 180 degrees. This is called the triangle sum theorem, just saying that the three angles added together has to equal 180 degrees. So if we take a look at this example where we want to find the measure of the missing angles within this triangle, we're going to use that triangle sum theorem to help us out. The three angles inside of the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to write an equation that says that. And now we're going to work on solving this for x. We can combine like terms on the left-hand side. So we get 5x plus 30 equals 180. I would subtract that 30 over to the right-hand side. So we end up with 5x equals 150, and then divide both sides by 5. And we get our next value of 30. Now we're not done because we wanted to find the measure of the missing angles. We've only found x so far. So now what we need to do with that x is take it and plug it back into those angles. In this top one, if we take 2 times x, or 2 times 30, we end up with a 60 degree angle. And down on the bottom left, if we plug in the 30 there, 3 times 30 gives us a 90 degree angle. Another type of angle that we can talk about is called an exterior angle. So we're looking at this triangle ABC. In order to get an exterior angle, what we're going to have to do is extend out one of the sides. So I'm looking at this BC side, and I'm going to extend it out further past point C. What that does is it creates an angle on the outside of our triangle. And I'm just going to call it angle 1 so that we can talk about it a little bit more. One way to find the measure of angle 1 is by looking at the other two angles within the triangle. So right now angle 1 is right next to angle C or adjacent to angle C. We would want to look at the non-adjacent angles which would be angle A and angle B. So to find the measure of angle 1, what we're going to do is we're going to add up the measure of angle A and angle B, the two non-adjacent interior angles. So in this example, we're going to find the measure of that exterior angle. So using what we just talked about, the measure of the exterior angle, which is the 2x plus 10, has to equal the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So we've got the 65 and the x. So there's our equation, 2x plus 10 equals 65 plus x. Now we just need to go through and solve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10 and subtract it over to the right-hand side. So we get 2x equals 55 plus x. And then I'm going to take that x and subtract it over to the left-hand side. So we end up with x equals 55. But again, we're not done. We have to find the measure of the angle itself. So we have to take this 55 and plug it in for x. If we take 2 times 55, that's 110, and then if we add 10 more to that, that angle ends up being 120 degrees. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.